that of the European Parliament, the European Commission gave the green light earlier this month to the cultivation of Pioneer 1507, a US-developed maize variety. Environmentalists say the genetically modified crop produces a toxin harmful to butterflies and moths. France and Italy were among the countries that voted against it. As for the Yes camp, it included Spain, Europe's biggest grower of another GM maize, Mon 810. Sarah Morris reports. Aragona in the Spanish Pyrenees is the European champion of genetically modified maize. Farmer Jesus has 50 hectares of GM corn grown from Monsanto's 810 seeds. He says genetic modification has produced a crop that resists the insect, the corn borer. As its name implies, the corn borer will drill itself away inside the plant. The corn will end up breaking and falling to the ground. And we also have a lot of wind in the area. So all this has a negative impact on our production levels. Jesus says every year that goes by, he notices more and more benefits to GM plants. With my genetically modified crops, I harvest an extra 1,500 to 2,000 kilos per hectare per harvest. Spain is one of the few European countries to allow GM farming. After the Monsanto 810 seed, many farmers are waiting to start planting another GM crop by the US company Pioneer. It will certainly be a good thing if a new variety of genetically modified corn becomes authorized because if the harmful insects start to build up a resistance to the transgenic corn we've been using for the past 15 years, then we'll be able to switch to another strain. This European Association of Maize Producers says the new GM crop would help it compete with rivals in North and South America. Europe's farmers are currently only allowed to sell GM corn for cattle, but some argue it's also safe for humans. All the corn comes from the fields around here. This factory a few miles away from the GM fields makes food products like popcorn. It has to prove that all its corn is GM free. That involves rigorous controls at every level of production. It's expensive for us, so it has to be expensive for the consumer. We have no choice but pass on the additional production cost of guaranteeing the corn as GM-free to the final price. If we were allowed to use GM foods in manufactured foodstuff in Europe, products would be cheaper for consumers. Spain may allow GM corn growing, but not everyone here champions it. Felix is an organic farmer who's unhappy about nearby fields being planted with GM seed. If transgenic corn is growing in this field right here, and keep in mind there's no way of knowing just like that whether it's GM or not, then if I plant my corn here the risk of contamination will be very high. Corn pollen is active up to 24 hours. Crops located at a 24 hours distance could become pollinated and contaminated, the pollen being carried by the wind or by an insect. It's rare for this region, but this cooperative kept using conventional seed. Its members compared their results to neighboring GM farms over 15 years. They conclude genetic tampering brings no real benefits. We sow our grain very early, and we have introduced a protocol for traditional farming fit for human consumption. We found that this technique generates more profit for the farmer than GM crops. Now in this part of the region, farmers are starting to produce less transgenic crops. The government estimates 140,000 hectares in Spain are dedicated to GM crops. Greenpeace says that figure is exaggerated by supporters of U.S. companies lobbying to bring GM foods to European tables. You're watching live from Paris, a reminder of our top stories.